Hey y'all, what are you doing? You know what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm out here looking for that shack outside LaGrange. You know what I'm talking about? Anyway, if you look in the background over there, there's oak trees around and I'm looking for these things. They're called oak apples, oak galls. All right guys, I am pulled over here on LaGrange Road. And this is gonna be highly scientific now. I like to multitask, so y'all know that I like, I've done an episode in the past. There'll be a link right up there, right about now, called Engine Bread. Well, guess what? It's time for some engine pizza. Let me get this fired up here. Give it about, I don't know, the recipe says about 15 miles. We'll check it out. So what happens here is an aphidious wasp lays an egg in a leaf node, like that little thing right there. Aphidious wasps are the insect order Hymenoptera, like bees and wasps, which I got stung a hundred times today, right in the head, but it didn't affect all this. That's right. I still look great. Thank you. Anyway, when the aphidious wasp oviposits eggs into the tree, it sends a chemical signal that fools the tree like, hey, there's a bunch of acorns out here. Put all your resources right here. That causes this gall to hypertrophize to feed the larvae that are in here who emerge through that hole right there. Oh, here they come, watch out. Anyway. There goes that car. Anyway, so oak trees are full of tannic acid. So what does all that mean? Well, it means that I'm gonna collect a bunch of these and I'm gonna show you how to do a stain or an ink with oak galls called oak gall ink. Now, I bet you didn't know this, but the United States Constitution was written with oak gall ink. I don't think it was from this one in particular, but it was, and before that, the Bible and all kinds of other books. I don't think they had uh, the internet or keyboarding or what we used to call typing in Mrs. Camp Nell's class by some, by the dude, I don't think Guggenheim or whatever his name is, that wrote the Bible. Wait a minute, he didn't write the Bible. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna make some stain out of oak galls. I'm gonna go show you how. You are going to be completely and utterly disamazed now. We're in the shed, I mean the laboratory. And um, I'm going to go through quickly what you're going to need here. You're going to need a mason jar and a mason jar lid. You are going to need one of these smashy things. They call a mortar pedestal. You're about ready to learn what these mean and what they're used for other than to sit as some trinket in a pharmacy shop while you're waiting three hours for a prescription that should take 10 minutes. You are going to need oat galls. You're going to need to cover your face with one of these COVID devices because you don't want to breathe this stuff. You're going to need some special water, special water. You're going to need some ferrous sulfate, not copper sulfate, ferrous sulfate. You're going to need some gum arabica, gum arabica. You can Google this stuff. I, I have a life outside of this. This is basically amber, which comes from the extrusion of sap when a boring insect, sometimes a human being with an errant saw, attacks a tree, the tree's hydrostatic pressure pushes out the invader or tries to seal the tree. And then, finally, you're going to need some thymy oil. Thymy oil. This is hard to run across. If you cannot find thymy oil, you sneak into the kitchen, you find the thymy, usually in powder, in the spice area, that's where they hide all the stuff they don't want you to find because they 
fi- they never figure out that you're going to go into their spice rack. But anyway, you find the thymine, and you get that, and then you drive to a drilling rig, and you sit there for an hour, and it will turn into thymine oil. Don't sit there for less than an hour or more than an hour because the concentration will be messed up. Okay, you're going to have to do some dust control here, which means, that's right, the world's smallest blower. Okay, that's what you're going to need. Oh, and you're going to need some Jesus when you die. Oh, and I forgot, you're going to need this, and you're going to need a bag, and you're going to need one of these medieval smashing devices. That's what you're going to need. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to take some oat galls. You're going to need about two ounces, which is about that much, not that much. I don't know where that measurement came from. I'd hate to even venture a guess. But you're going to put the galls into the plastic bag. And you're going to seal that up. Like so, with this fancy Ziploc thing. You move stuff out of the way, and then you're going to use said medieval smashy thing to decimate these as much as possible. I don't think you want to see this. It's kind of gory. Anyway, you're going to mash these up as fine as possible. Okay, once these are all smashed up as much as you can, you want to get out your mortar and pedestal thingy. You don't want to use the food processor because the whole idea of how these things form isn't that, well, we might not care, but somebody in the family that likes to eat out of the same stuff might care. So anyway, you're going to put this stuff in here and you're going to go to town mashing it up like this. Now, you might wonder why this thing is here. Well, that's so it doesn't splatter all over, and then you're breathing some kind of spore. Did I ever tell you how much I dislike mushrooms? Yeah, don't even go there. Anyway, I'm going to mash all the stuff up as much as possible using this ancient apothecary technique. Okay, once that is done... You're going to end up with a consistency, a powdery consistency like this, okay? You're going to put all that into a bag and beat it around a little bit more. And anyway, try to get it uh, down as much as possible. And you want to remember the husk or the outer part of these galls is kind of hard, like almost like a nut. So you're not going to get everything broke down, but get it to that point as much as possible. It's called pulverization pulverization new word it will be on the test okay you're going to pay extremely close attention now because there's something that I neglected to tell you on purpose this is linen do you know what linen is I thought not the reason I didn't tell you about it before is I didn't want you to get a bunch of hang-ups that there might be something wrong if you were seen with linen or actually said the word linen now I need you to have one of these no this is not your grandmother's I'm not a thief. I'm a bunch of things, but not a thief. I want you to put linen here. And I want you to put this here. And I want to take you to take the contents of the bag. Oh, by the way. You see that? Uh-huh. That's right. Put the contents of the bag in here. Like so, again, the dust, don't be breathing the dust. Please don't breathe the dust. Unless I don't like you. Then go feel free to breathe the dust. Now, what I'm going to try to do is get this as concentrated as possible. So I'm going to spin this thing back and forth. And remember, there's going to be some chunks in here that are going to impede our process somewhat. Return this however you need to. And so all the fines come out. And you're just left with the big chunks like this. We kind of did this with the Mississippi River water when we finished the guitar that way, remember? 
episode right up there, right about now. Anyway, we're just going to keep doing this until we get as many of the fines as we can into that linen. You see that? Have to be in the linen. All right, there we go. We've ground that down as fine as we can get it now. I'm just going to put wad up this linen and get all the sides of it together and then we're just going to twist it and I'm going to put the zip tie why am I using a zip tie well because dudes use zip ties right come on we got 4,000 of them it's okay to use one of them sometime right okay like that now I'm going to put this in this mason jar, and I didn't cut off the end of the zip tie, you see that, because it'll come in handy when I'm trying to fish this out in the morning. Now, I am going to put the special water I have, the secret water, in here until the bag is filled up. All right, we got to get the head space right here because, you know, if you are an award-winning county fair ribbon-winning carrot canner like me, um, what? You don't believe me? Here, let me get back over here a little bit. You see what I got? Uh-huh. Well, you say now, right? Yeah, there's blue ones and purple ones in there. Y'all know what that means. Anyway, get the head space right. And then we're going to cover this up, take it in where it's warm, and let it soak overnight. Oh, last thing. This is where the world's smallest blower comes in at. Oh, look at the raw power of that puppy. Yeah, I might as well blow these ribbons off for a while. What's that say? Look at that. Best of show. <laughs> Did you expect anything different? All right. Let's pretend that you have an abundance of oak galls and you have access to an old ice chopper from the Acton Women's Club that you got for a reasonable price and you want to process a lot of oak galls into this fine powder right here. Let me turn the volume down and show you how to do that. No, don't even. I'm running short. You can see that. Okay, guys, it is the next day. And this is what we have for product. You see there's water. You can see the linen. And you can see this very dark liquid here. Let me tell you something about this very dark liquid. It will stain everything. Even though we haven't put all the alchemist ingredients in it yet it will stain everything which is what's about the gloves now since I can't use stuff for anything else once I've done this I went to the 
Acton Woman's Club Boutique. Yeah, I said boutique, and then what? Anyway, Acton Woman's Club Boutique and got some scraparatus like this pot here that we'll be dumping this into and then we'll be using the hot plate to render this down some to about four ounces. Write that down. Okay, here we go. Now remember, we put that zip tie here. You see that? So we can reach in and get all of this out. This stuff will stain everything. So before we strain that out, we're going to dump this. No, this is not soda. There we go. Put the lid back on. I'm going to strain this out. The raw power that is my hand strength. There we go. Put that in there. Slop this around as much as possible. I hate to ruin a new pair of bibs doing this. Okay, now. We're going to move our Acton Woman's Club boutique sticker and put it in a safe place. We're going to put this here. We're going to adjust the camera angle. I'm sure it needs some adjustment. Oh, look at that. Smooth pan. We're going to put this on. Note, red light going on. And wait for it to boil. How exciting. The time of excitement has come. We'll delay no longer. This is rendered down some. You see by its rapid boiling. We will carefully put in two tablespoons of ferrous sulfate. Oh, that turned black almost immediately. There's more. Don't blow up. Then we're going to put in one tablespoon of... gum arabic there we go and the final ingredient three drops of there we go thymy oil and we're going to stir and it's getting dark already victory Let's let this cook in now. Man, don't I have a nice shed? I mean, gourmet kitchen. Okay, we have cooked for plenty long now. We're going to turn that off while it's still boiling. We are going to... There we go. Pour it in this glass right here. And everything cooked down. Now the bad part about this stuff is wherever this was on this pot, it will start to corrode. But we're going to let this cool just a tad and then we're going to take a look at what it looks like on a piece of neck wood. All right, guys, we are in the shop with our bottle of Oak Gall ink. Now, we went through a lot of effort to make this, but you're gonna see it's worth it. So what do you do with something that's a stain that makes things almost as black as my really cool Paul Miro Junk Pile Guitars t-shirts? Well, let me tell you, you know I make License plate guitars. You know Gallia Volt has a few of these. One of them's in Europe right now. The other one's on the front uh, cover of her new album, One Woman Band. And then she's got a couple scattered across the United States. I think Deke Rivers 
has one of these, you know, Deke Rivers, he's the one that uh, supplied me the Mississippi clay. No, that was Cody Harrell. Uh, Deke Rivers is the one that gave me the Mississippi River water for the episode of uh, putting a really crazy stain on a kit guitar right up there, right about now. Anyway, so you're familiar with these. Well, I got an oddball one. I'm going to take a couple of boards I had laying around making neck and, and uh, one of these John Sawyer kit bodies for a license plate guitar. And this burned up, look at this, burned up, torched Mississippi license plate. And we're going to make a really cool guitar. And part of that guitar is going to be, we are going to stain the neck with Old Gall ink. So let's do a little work, get another board glued on here, get it routed out where it will fit the right pickup. It's going to have one of these hot pickups on it, yeah. So that's got to be in the right place for the fingerboard and everything to line up. So let's get this neck done, routed out, and sanded down, and then we'll put some stain on it. Okay, check it out. Bam, let's catch up here. What am I doing? Well, I've got this Mississippi license plate that's been on fire and it looks like it's charred like this wood. Now, what I need to do is I need to put it in this body that looks like it's been on fire. And for it to all fit together, I had to sand this down so nothing sticks to it that's going to mess up the charred perfectly charred look burned finish that we're going to do with our oak gall ink now i started off with 60 grit and finished up with 400 grit every part of this neck that is going to be visible has been sanded down again there's nothing on it no finger oil, any of that kind of thing. I mean, I dip my hands in some kind of secret something or other to make them look all glamorous for this job. See that? Anyway, I'm going to apply the Oak Gall ink on here, and it's going to be a little bit light at first, but watch what happens. And the whole idea is the Mississippi Fireball is going to come together. All right, here we go. I took some oak gall ink and put it on some tulip poplar and this is what the tulip poplar looked like before. Now look, let's look at the after. The whole idea was to make this neck look scorched like it had been on fire so it would fit into this body that looks like it's on fire right now and it holds this Mississippi license plate that has actually been on fire so now all I got to do is cut up some of this faded Marvel mystery oil can put some of it in the right spots put a fretboard on this thing and some good tuners and then we're gonna rig up this hot rod pickup and this thing will scream meet the Mississippi fireball all right there you go. Now you know why people are looking for that shack outside of the Grange. It's for these things. What were you thinking? Anyway, you never know what you're going to learn on my channel. I'm glad I could educate you. And yeah, you're welcome. Anyway, that's worth a like and a subscribe. And don't covet that guitar. There's only one of them.
Where is that shack? I don't have a tan to let myself in. <laughs>